Rivers of liquid rock plunge over the cliffs and into the water below. This is the front line in a battle between the elements. Most of the lava is swept away before it can settle. But inch by inch, the island grows. Below the waves, the battle rages on. As the lava hits the water, it's burning at over a thousand degrees Celsius. Cold currents from the deep send its temperature plummeting, releasing steam with explosive consequences. The lava fights on, but it's only a matter of time before its fire goes out. The commotion attracts attention. But it'll be some time before it's safe to settle here. Hi, my name is Joe Reising. I'm at the Joint Institute for the Study of the Atmosphere and the Ocean at the University of Washington. I was the chief scientist on this expedition, so I led the, uh, the cruise and the trip to the West Mata eruption. The video that you'll be looking at is ma large magma bubbles. They're about three feet across, and the bubbles are molten rock that are expanded under the, pressure, the gas pressure of magmatic gas. And the magmatic gas, we presume, is mostly water. And when the water is under the magma, it's at magmatic temperatures, thousands of degrees. And when it's suddenly cooled by coming in contact with seawater, the bubble bursts. So what excites me the most about this volcanic eruption is that we have, that on planet Earth, this is a process happening all the time. And yet, we have never seen it happening in quite this way. And the ocean floors are formed almost exclusively by volcanic activity. And strangely enough, we really have never seen molten lava flowing on the seafloor from a submarine volcano. We have seen other eruptions much shallower in the ocean, 
but in this case, we're actually seeing molten lava flowing on the seafloor. We're seeing these magma bubbles. We're seeing these explosive events. We're seeing the, 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 the seafloor open up and pour out magma, and we're seeing these pillow lavas, probably one of the most common forms of rock on Earth. And despite the fact that this happens, 80% of the volcanoes, that are, 80% of the eruptions basically on Earth are happening underwater. And we've never made these observations before. means the long one. The Hawaiian islands in general are all volcanic of origin, and the newest Hawaiian island rising up from the seafloor is Loihi Seamount, just off the coast from the big island, about 30 kilometers or so, so okay. within sight. Yeah. Now, the summit of Loihi Seamount is about 1,000 meters below the sea surface, so without remote operated vehicles or submersible, you really can't get there from here. However, Loihi is probably in the, in the realm of 100,000 years old or so. It'll probably break the surface, and you'll be able to see it with your naked eye from the air uh, in about another you know, 10,000 years or so. Through mm -hmm. technology development, through engineers wanting to do oceanography, we're able to stay on the bottom longer. We've had dives with ROV Jason that last five days. A vehicle on the, pre on the seafloor presence for five days in a hydrothermal environment like that. It's amazing. When we put Pisces down, it takes almost an hour to sink down to the bottom. You do your work, and then you've got to come back up. We're lucky if, we, if we're in the water for 10 hours. It's an excellent exploration vehicle because you can basically go wherever you want and you can move relatively quickly. We've only explored maybe 5 or 10 percent of the sea floor using robots, using autonomous underwater vehicles that are really like underwater drones. The pilots of these vehicles are the unsung heroes. They do amazing things. At least in a sub submersible, a manned submersible, they can see with their own eyes, with their 3D perception, what they're looking at. When, when you're sitting, uh, you know, in a control van with a joystick on a uh, you know, on a ship that's uh, several uh, kilometers away from the vehicle, everything is done by uh, using video cameras for sighting. Loihi is special because it's our local Hawaiian submarine volcano. We had the one and only documented eruption in 1996. You know, we've been closely monitoring it ever since. It's had a couple of other earthquake swarms uh, in the ensuing 20 years or so, but, but nothing indicative of another eruption. We've learned that from many perspectives, uh, the action happens while it's erupting or immediately thereafter. And that's not just um, from the geological perspective, also from the microbiological and uh, from the geothermal perspective. That those sort of moments and days after an eruption, things are changing very rapidly. Lately, it's all less than you know, 50 degrees C. We find vents at the summit, at the very base of the volcano, at 5,000 meters deep. We don't find active vents, but we find microbial communities that are very indicative of subsea floor. So the aquifer below the sea floor is re reacting in the similar way to what we see expressing itself at vents at the summit. It's the difference between, say, being in a ship uh, would be analogous to being in a plane versus actually walking over the Net Volcanoes National Park and saying, okay, there's a meter dip here and there's a meter dip here. I found a fumarole, I found a new vent. One sort of little known fact that I think uh, people don't generally appreciate is that in fact there are more active volcanoes in the oceans than there are on land by, by a very wide margin. And this has been so over most of Earth's history. The Pacific is the deepest body of water on the planet. But sometimes the seabed shoots to the surface. Behold, one of nature's rarest sights. The creation of a new island. This is Kavachi in the Solomon Islands. One of the most active undersea volcanoes in the world. In the last hundred years, Kavachis emerged above the waves just a handful of times. But so far, to no avail. Powerful waves keep sweeping its efforts away.